Kiriti Naikiakwe, Takuta Elizabeth Kirikire, no Ngati Oneone, Te Aitanga Mahaki, Fana Wakai, Rongo Fakata, Hemehi, Arohate Naikiakwe Te Fananga, Mingaita Manuhiri. Tēnā koe mō tō āwhina ki a tātou katoa e tū tonu tātou kei roto i te kaupapa whakahirehira mō ngā whānau ngā hapu ngā iwi. Nō reira, kei a koe te rākau. Take it away. Ao, kia ora koutou. Ngā mihi mahana ki a koutou katoa. Ai, he mokupuna au o te tai rāwhiti, tēnā koe e te whanaunga e te rangatira. He wahine pūrotuma. Absolutely. So, yes, it is a lovely day here in Gisborne where I live and I have been over the country a lot over the last little while because we're it's in a campaign i hope you are all enrolled to vote and that you've started voting early and getting out there <laughs> but for many years now i've been working in um in lgbtiq areas and, and working with our whanau uh for well over nearly 30 years probably around lgbtiq specific kind of work but with our whānau more closer to 40 years, uh, starting from a youth activist when I was about 15 and being mentored by amazing, amazing people. By the time we're 18, then we were uh, running our first national hui and, and on national groups and boards of, of young people. And then by the time I was 19, on my first advisory board to government. And so I've been on, and, and at 15 also, my mother signed me up as treasurer of the Māori Women's Welfare League as a junior member. So on one side, we were out protesting, writing strongly worded letters to our MPs. And on the other, we, I learned how to write minutes, how to read books, how to keep uh, track of money. Um, oh, just one moment. Sorry about that. In a shared space in my home. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> okay. So as a young person coming out young and kind of more focused on being about issues to do with Māori. And so it wasn't until I was a bit older then that I started to realise that there wasn't a lot of work that was happening which focused particularly on people who are Māori and people who... Uh, had our diverse genders, sexualities, or sex characteristics, and even that of itself, learning more about different parts of our community and ensuring that uh, all of us had a chance to express who we were uh, and, and making sure that we created spaces and were providing environments where we didn't exclude one part of our community over other, while still allowing space for each of us and, and however we wanted to be because uh, there's safety, <laughs> it should be safety in those spaces. Mm -hmm. uh, but if we say we're inclusive, then we should actually be that. So in about 20 years ago, we formed Te Whana Whana, uh, which advocates for Tagatapui to tell our stories, build our communities and leave a legacy. And uh, Te Whana Whana is based in Wellington. So we're a national trust. I lead a lot of the political work and Kevin Honui, many of you will know, leads our, our cultural work together. We also are involved in lots of other projects, particularly around research. Uh, my PhD on Takatapui was the first major research on Takatapui, which really acknowledged us as a expressing a wide range of expressions of identities. And it looks like Kevin's PhD will be the second <laughs> still waiting for the Honour Project Aotearoa to release their work. Uh, so there's a book coming up for that, but also their, their main research paper they did, their three-year um, project. So over, over the years, I've been really privileged to work with a lot of people. Te Whana Whana has worked in collaboration with over 100 organisations. We don't take any government funding, and so we very much... Uh, work to support other organisations who obtain funding and we do 
collaborative and joint projects. So that's resulted in our Takatapu resources, uh, but projects, especially around Wellington, but also around the country, it's it's that we helped host uh, Ilga World. We brought 500 LGBTIQ activists from around the world to Wellington, uh, which was an incredible thing and so many people were involved in. The, the, so as part of my research, I, when I was doing my PhD and I was just trying to think about what does health and wellbeing look like for our people? And, and, and if anyone's followed my work before, I, I very much focus on te whare taka tapa whā, the four sides of the whare. Our, you know, our, our wairua, our spirituality and religion, our whānau, the, the families of our birth and choosing and, and the communities we organise ourselves around, uh, our taha hiningaro, our, our mental health and, and psychological wellbeing, uh, and our tinana, absolutely, bodily integrity so, so crucial. And, and so I thought about what this whare would look like and I came up with this concept around a conceptual whare takatāpū, a place of health and well-being for us. And I always conceived of it as something that happened because my research, the research of Ngā Hui Te Awe uh, is that we can find no evidence that there was anything wrong or any kind of punishment and in fact was accepted in a normal part of traditional pre-colonial Māori life around gender, gender fluidity, especially in our gods and our um, kaitiaki and our tipua, specifically beings who could change gender and form. But that there's, that, that us as people could be, have some fluidity, as long as we got our work done, as long as we produce the next generation, then we could kind of be with who we wanted to be, live how we wanted to live. And, and so on that basis then, I, I imagine this whare as a place which could welcome everybody who's come to this country since, the absolute core. So for me, that was, it's, it's an absolutely a tiriti o waitangi issue that just as our land, our language, and all these other concepts of our, our concept of whānau and our connection with each other was so threatened, it was subverted, and they tried to take so much from us, they also took away our stories and our histories about our sexuality and gender. Mm -hmm. And again, in every other area, they did not succeed. They never removed everything. They never could take it all away. We are too strong. We will keep being strong. And so I saw that it was my role to keep bringing these stories back and being a bit of a poe in the ground myself to just say, oh no, you cannot do that. We can prove it. We can take your park, your ways and we can prove it. This is in the Māori narratives, our people telling our stories that we know this. But also your park, your narrative confirms it because you were so surprised when you got here and discovered what was going on. What, women leaders? What? Uh, just outrageous. So I think of this whare. I think of a whare that <clears throat> was strong. It was, it was beautiful. It was woven. It was carved. And we had all these flourishing gardens. Our people are healthy and strong. Our kids are running around. And... People are just kind of getting on with their life, being who they are and getting the work done and enjoying each other's company, each other's bodies, just getting on with life. And colonization comes along and they see this whare and they're not happy about it at all. They start to, they, they absolutely did everything they could to try and pull that whare down, pull in the roof so the rain gets and rip our carvings off the wall, tear our weaving out dig up all our gardens my belief has always been that our tupuna saw what was coming they saw this in many many areas of the way that our life was being affected by the settlers coming into this country and i believe they hid stories sometimes in plain sight and they're waiting for us to discover them and i just want to do a shout out here to emma lyons because she's starting to do some incredible work around and, and bringing her own amazing background and perspective to sex positivity and how that's actually because we know there is something we've done there's some research around that but 
I think that there's a handful of us who are trying to do the historical work. And I just want to shout out to all of those who are jumping in in this space because there's each tiny little thing that we can find is more evidence that grounds us and that reminds us of what things could be and therefore gives us the strength and the confidence to say from a Māori platform right now, this is where we stand with the support of our atua and our tūpuna. And so I, for me, that's critical. So I imagine this funny. Our tūpuna have been waiting for us to rebuild it. And so with my work, um, I, I've, I've taken that on as my life's work to help rebuild that whare and everything it represents in our communities. My PhD, I called it He Whāriki Takatāpui because I imagine it is the woven mat that in that whare we sweep the floors, get the dust out, we weave our mats so we can sit down, we can talk, we can have our discussions, but also we can stand up and we can go out there, do our work, get organised and fight. So... <laughs> Over the five years, I was saying to Kitty, we were talking just before, a lot of what I do is just constant action research. Every time I talk, it's where I'm up to right at that point. And, and over the last while, while I've talked to people, while I've done more research, I've done more thinking, uh, then it's like, oh, this is where I'm at now. Because my background is also in strategic planning and organizing. And so I love the beautiful and the conceptual because that helps uh, ground me back into our culture and our spirituality, but then I, the other part of me wants to, okay, and what? How do we make this practical? And so it, over the last few years, I've been developing the Whare Takatāpū, and I had an opportunity to work with Women's Refuge. Uh, they, one of their pillars of their organisation is lesbian visibility, which I totally support. I also, I am Takatāpū, I also identify as lesbian femme. And so I have many people uh, of my friends and some mentors who were instrumental in, in the starting up and of refuge. In fact, one of um, our next door neighbors uh, in the house that I grew up in with my very violent father was inspired to become part of the refuge movement because of living next door to us and watching uh, the police come and go, no repercussions, uh, but just some scared wife and children. So I will always, always respect the, the work that our refuge does at the same time as knowing this, that they needed work on how we think about trans people, trans women, non-binary people and intersex people who still who need help and need support and how does that work in a space which is for women and, and to what extent are trans women included, which of course they should be, but as we know, that does not always happen. And so I was involved in the two-year project with them. And I had the great privilege then of developing my, my framework. And so I want to <clears throat> uh, kind of go over. So I thought about, right, we're rebuilding the whare. So the first thing then I thought is around whakapapa. It's remembering everything that's come before us because by our including of our whanau who have already been here, even though the names trans, non-binary, intersex might be new, uh, our whānau have always been here. And so they have every right <laughs> to self-define however they like. And we're, it's our right then to say, awesome, thank you for letting me know. Uh, we have no right whatsoever to trample on the mana or the wairua of anybody else to self-define themselves. <laughs> self-define themselves. You know what I mean? And so I think about whakapapa, it's acknowledging that actually whether they had names for it before or not, they've always been there. And so in the whare, I imagine it's being rebuilt, the roof is going on, and we can put the photographs up in the back of the whare of those we've lost. And even though we don't know their names, we remember them and we honour them. And then I think of wairua. I think, and my belief is, that because wairua exists beyond death, that just the short time we're on this planet and our physical being, that <clears throat> why do it is such a powerful thing that we just kind of have a hold of for a short time. And so when I think about the fact that the little research we have about Māori is that we know our gender and our sexuality earlier than the non-Māori, 
uh, and at quite young ages, for me, then that's wairua. That's our tūpuna. That's our atua coming to us and saying, in this earthly form, you, you have all this capacity. You have this fluidity open to you. This is who you'll be in this life. And again, it is no one has the right to trample on the mana of anybody and how they express their way to it in, in the life form that they have. And so, and then I think mana. <laughs> it's that absolute right to be, be who we are, uh, to be respected, to have people around us who... Um, will care for us and uh and and absolutely the ability to advocate for ourselves uh to collaborate and i think particularly with men i think a lot about violence generally it's an area i keep deeply about because of my upbringing but because of the prevalence of violence across our culture across this country really I think it's tied in with the binge drinking culture. It's tied in with the macho culture. And the, all, all not good things. Probably tied closely to neoliberalism and capitalism. Everything. Everything connects together. Uh, and it uh, falls on us. And I think with mana, it's... In, in terms of the whare, I think of wairua, wairua. I think of the whakairua. I think these are our tūpuna our kaitiaki, our tipua, and with mana, I think of it as the central po of the whare. And when I've thought about this earlier, I've always thought that mana wahine is the foundation, I've said this, I believe this still, is the foundation for eliminating hom homophobia, biphobia, uh, transphobia, and interphobia, uh, because <clears throat> the balancing, it's the balancing of between genders and that with these two po, the potoko mana are holding up the mana of the smare takatapui, that then all the genders in between have, uh, are looked after, they're protected. And so, but over my work over the last few months, I've realised that's not enough. That is not enough mana <laughs> for our trans non-binary and intersex whanau and I've thought how does this structurally work and I've I came up with the concept then of mana tupua which says based on our ancestors is actually there's the two posts of the house the tahuhu the backbone of our ancestor the tahuhu these posts hold this up this holds up the roof together <laughs> with our cisgender people with our trans non-binary and intersex whanau together and united supporting each other we hold up the mana of the whole whare and this is critical we cannot say we have got sufficient privilege now we're not going to let any of you have it we're not going to we're going to use our privilege to deny the rights of anyone else in a rainbow whanau that is outrageous i will speak against that in every opportunity and believe me, running for this election, I'm getting, had quite a few opportunities. <laughs> so, uh, because it's like, no, you just don't get, you do not have the right. And it is not when, when lesbians fought so hard, when gay men fought so hard, when different parts of our community, when our bisexual whanau are going, ah, we're not just one or the other, we are all of this all of the time, uh, then we need to see that, okay, my life's a bit easier now. I don't get the harassment and violence I had as a younger lesbian. I'm, I'm more settled in my life. Uh, so that doesn't mean it's cool for me to say, I don't recognize that our young people are getting hassled. I don't recognize that our trans women are getting hassled. It's, uh, instead it's to that, right, I'm more comfortable, I'm safer. Um, therefore, I wanna help anyone else who is not because that's the point of our whare people is to bring our people to where it's safe. And the goal is that whare becomes our country. But for now, it's group by group. It's organization by organization. It's whare by whare. But if we can have a collective vision, then that's where we need to go. And then I think about tapu. I think about bodily integrity. It's about what is sacred and that the sacred creates safety. But for a lot of our whānau, 
<laughs> they are not safe in their bodies. And that's not even counting. I'm saying I'm putting violence in the mana section because I'm just talking, trying to be in our own bodies. And for, for people who like me, who suffered, have suffered um, rape, um, abuse, all of those things, that unwanted sexual attention that happens, unwanted pregnancies, all those things that can happen. But we, I still, in this cis body, have not had to deal with having my um, infant body had surgery on because somebody decided that my gender wasn't normal and they would make they would play God and turn me into what they chose. Um, that our intersex whānau, which then has repercussions for the rest of their lives. Uh, I haven't had my police, I'm a femme. I, I don't have my uh, gender or right to be in a female space challenged ever. But my butch wife, every day, it's misgendered and asks if she's in the right place. Uh, our trans men, it's all of our whānau who just, again, it's so important that we create this space then, tell us what's going on. And it's why it's so important then that we read the reports, uh, counting ourselves, Shout out to Jack, Jack and Jamie who created that incredible body of work. Uh, all of the stuff, the things that our people have put together and every submission we write that says these are the issues. And so when I think about Sapu, it's that we have to create healing spaces. And so when I, the whare, the katapui then, it's places for rongoa. It's growing our plants and our trees. So we can do that more physical healing, but it's creating safe, safe spaces where we can talk, we can cry, we can reflect, and we can start to heal from a whatever has been the impact of our own earthly lives, but the historical trauma <laughs> that our people have faced as Māori, as Takatāpui, and people from every culture in this world who've made their life in this country, uh, that they, they we want, to, we want to put aside that space, put aside the time that says the healing has to happen. And, and then I think about tikanga. As I say, I'm a strategy person. I <laughs> want to say I love the conceptual stuff and I love metaphor because that's how I think, it's how I do my artwork. And then how do we make this into something really practical mm -hmm. that our people can use? And so... Part of my work has been in treaty relations, also how I've made my living over the last long while. And uh, a treaty framework that was created by Brenda Tahi, who was one of my amazing mentors, uh, she allowed me the use of it. And what I've done is I've kind of taken this concept and then woven it into my whare takatāpui framework. And for as long as I've talked about the whare takatāpui, I've talked about a national rainbow strategy. Only when I was writing up my story about the Whare Takatapu, I realized, oh, they're the same thing. And all this time I've been working on one, I've been thinking I've been neglecting the other, but actually same thing. And uh, it's kind of a little bit embarrassing to say I hadn't realized that, but it's, again, it's my brain. You're seeing me operate in real time, <laughs> how I figure things out and, and how I work. And so I've realized that, yeah, those things mesh together. So I've come up. And so the treaty work I do in the future will absolutely be working how those things connect up, what that means then. So for example, uh, for mana, then if we're looking at a, a treaty framework and of expectations of how well an organization might be doing working for Māori, uh, we're saying, let's look at your leadership, let's look at your structure. Uh, for wairua, what are the values in an organizational culture? Uh, for tikanga, what's your strategy development and business planning? How do you do your risk management and how does that work? And so I'll uh, to leave some time for questions, but this is the overview. Uh, since since um, developing that whare takatapu, whare takatapu model uh, for the refuge, then I've included some other sections around whanaungatanga, uh, and um, manaki tanga. Now, I've just realized, and I've added one on mato, matauranga. I've just noticed though, 
there's one I missed out that I want to make sure I add here very quickly is around Modi. In the whare, I think of that as tukutuku. And, and when I worked with Refuge, I did a written manual, but I also made a whole lot of videos based on three of my marae. And we filmed the Modi one in my whare out at Pohoi Hiraina e Pakohai Marae. And my father carved that house and oversaw. My cousins and my aunties did a lot of the weaving, but when the pinga on Kieke got damaged, that was meant to be for the whare, uh, my father got ribbon. So it is a riot of colour. They're pinks and oranges and yellows. It is stunning. And I thought that's that's exactly it. That that's Modi. That is our life spark. That when we um, you know, here's this traditional whare, uh, these real traditional patterns, but there's contemporary colours and materials. It's like that's Modi. That's about who we are, how we want to express ourselves, the labels, the terms, the identities we use for ourselves. And, and so I want to acknowledge the right again of everybody to in this whare to have their story told, to know that they belong, and to ha not have to make apologies or excuses and just come and feel safe and feel relaxed. And that's mm -hmm. what I want for our whare. And so I just want to hand it back to you. Thank you for letting me talk. And I'm really happy to take questions from you or our whānau for watching. Uh, Hei hā pai te o tātou whānau takapāpui e, ko tēnei te mihi atu ki a koe e. Ok whānau, questions, comments, feedback for our wonderful Pākuta Elizabeth Kirikiri. Kauai whakamā, don't be shy. Uh, and that reminds me, the um, it, we thought it was cute, but the um, that a, a panu went out with my name is Elizabeth Ayono Kirikiri. Oh. So my wife, my wife is Alofa Ayono. We did talk about having hyphenated names when we got married, but we decided no, it's already hard enough for people to say and spell it now. Mm. So we decided. So we thought that was lovely, a lovely touch, but we just just to say that no. I can't claim that name. <laughs> you know, it's also a title, so I bestowed a title upon you. <laughs> okay. E pātai tēnei from Paikia Tamurāriki. Why do takatāpui need to explain themselves to everyone, e.g. straight, arrogant people who don't actually want an answer but just to insult you? I think generally uh, move away from people who want to insult us full stop. There are enough people out there trying to cause harm in a in a binary, the binary structure, heterosexist structure that we live in that is colonization. Uh, so if you can avoid the situation, great. Step out of it if you realize, because some people want to, I've learned this new term called energy vampires. We are yeah, that people <laughs> not right, oh that God, so accurate. Uh, that people just want to take and take, and even if it's only just your time and to make you upset or angry, we should not have to explain ourselves. Hmm. Where we should put where I suggest, where I recommend people put the energy in is with the people you love, hmm. is with the people you trust. One of the bits of advice I have for when I'm working with young people, and especially if their parents are being really difficult and it's hard to talk to them, I always say go to the oldest person in your family you trust and ask them to sort it out for you. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes the conversations are hard, but never, never waste time on it. It's on people who do not matter in your life. Mm -hmm. um, and I do want to acknowledge that if you're trying to access healthcare, if you're trying to uh, get an education, hold a job, get a house, somewhere to live. You're engaging with people all the time. And we're always having to choose, do we come out? And if we don't pass and, and, and we are in, in the person that we are, 
the or, or we present in such a way that people make stereotypes about that is it's just a constant process of managing and I hate that that is the world that we still live in and it's even more important then that people can when we're in those situations like I'm constantly in situations still where people are really racist even while they claim to be supportive and we committed to the treaty but no we're not going to listen to anything the Māoris have to say uh, we're going to do this we've heard it but mm, we don't think so so these things are constant in our lives so yeah manage it as best we can get support where we can go to safety as soon as we can how does the interaction between tikanga maori and being trans wakatane wakawahine work the interaction or the relationship the kaupapa um, because there are, as a teacher at um, the University of Otago, uh, Wellington School of Medicine, we, I have a space here that is takatāpui safe, uh, takatāpui that uplifts the mana of our takatāpui uh, trans students, me ira atu kaupapa, um, but uh, I know that there is um, a lot of my colleagues have great difficulty. They can come to terms with lesbian, lesbian, with, um, you know, they can come to terms with that, but, but transgender whānau, it's beyond them. And they are responsible for the ultimately responsible for the education of our young people, of our medical students, and therefore the quality of our practice with those who wish or who are in the process of transitioning. I think there's kind of different levels you have to operate in. The, for a start, because I believe that our sexuality and gender come through our wairua, then whatever the form that takes is who we are. And, and, and therefore Māori, being who you are, and is, is as important as our whakapapa, it's, it's part of everything. It's all connected. And so I think that in those, again, getting support from people to help be more com comfortable in different spaces because there are people who absolutely want to uh especially in Māori spaces where they want don't, they think of lgbtiq and that kind of framing is a pakia concept and of course it's not it's not at all it's pakia words for old concepts and old old identities old um expressions mm -hmm. uh the key thing if we're aware of people that need support in this area that they need to go and do their own learning it's just tiring that our trans non-binary and intersex whanau uh, have to do their emotional labor have to do all the educating when actually just trying to get on with your life and and so as much as possible those of us who are cis and uh, in these kind of roles therefore just to make ourselves available say hey how about you come talk to us about that how about you read something that's being written by trans people how about you read uh go and look on the itens website about mm. people and start to broaden your understanding about this because your personal views are um dangerous yeah, they're dangerous and they cause harm mm -hmm. but also mm -hmm. There's human rights led, human rights frameworks that this country signs on to. Our own legislation prohibits discrimination. We know, of course, that does not help us in many, many cases. Because, you know, look at the world. But uh, it's still something that people should be held accountable to. Yeah. Not all of us are in the position to, to make that happen. So those of us who are need to. Yeah. Uh, here, here. Uh, Pātai tēnei mai India Logan Riley. 
Are there any resources, kia ora Nis, are there any resources or guidance that you can recommend for our marae papakainga that haven't developed tikanga or welcoming for kāro for our non-binary and trans kāno? Cool. I, I would recommend our takatāpui resources. Uh, they were, I wrote them in 2015, the takatāpui part of the whānau. Mm. Uh, many of some of you have heard me speak before will know that I got the title of that when I was 15, 16, and I hitchhiked from Dunedin to Gisborne to tell my great grandmother, who was born in 1903, that I was a lesbian. Of course, she never heard of that before. But once I explained what that meant, and she was so relaxed, not a problem, because she told me about her aunties who lived as couples together, where she is from in Tikope. And so when I said, what's the name for them? She goes, there's no name. They're just part of the whanau. And so I use that phrase all the time, saying it was just ordinary. They loved each other. Not a problem. Mm. They already had their children, so not a problem. <laughs> and that's what she told me. She goes, that's fine, as long as you have children. Turns out I couldn't make them. So that's why I keep finding more young people to mentor and adopting mm. nurses and, and non-binary <laughs> cool kids. Mm. And so I think the resources are sound. So the, the, the first one was done with the Mental Health Foundation, so more specifically suicide prevention. The second one with Rainbow mm. uh, Whānau Journeys, Grown Up Takatāpui Whānau Journeys. And, and, and shout, out, shout out to Tony and Morgan who worked with mm. me uh, on that project. Amazing. And so in that resource, we talked to young people, their parents and their grandparents. And so that is both of those do documents, there's resources, they're short, but they're very beautiful visually. And this is not other people's artworks. <laughs> and, and, and so they're, sim they're simple for our whānau to read and understand because some of these, and it's our whānau are clever. It's not about that. It's sometimes it's how to understand concepts they haven't really thought about before. And I've worked with many Māori across the country and many whānau. And once they understand or are just told, oh, this was accepted. Oh, okay, fine. So it's not a parky thing. It's not a new thing. It's an old thing. Mm. And so uh, that's the other thing I would recommend Inside Out has a resource called uh, that is Poor Fitty Guidelines. Mm. And it's quite an interesting, it's a really good one because then it says, okay, then who goes where in, in the um and the, when you're talking specifically about tikanga, it does cover a lot of things, but for many people on Marae, it's about our protocols. And so that is also a really lovely um, resource for people to look at. And all of these resources are very visual. They use lots of quotes, and I think those are good introductions. And, uh, you know, find people like me, like Kiri, who are available. It would be good if they're from the, that iwi, which particularly mm. that it is. Uh, find leading takatāpui there who can come and sit down with them and have a conversation because it doesn't matter where you are and you're in this country, you've got takatāpui relations. This affects every Māori, every iwi, whānau and hapū. He pātai anō tātou. My concern is with um, those of our whaia and our kuia um, who who just don't get it with mm. regard to um, trans uh, non-binary identities. Mm. And so, um, you know, I have a whanaunga who's uh, transitioning as a trans man um, and was at one point uh, supporting the role of the kaikaranga um, and in that um, wahine role on the marae. And so now he is visibly uh, transitioning, um, but is still being misgendered in public spaces on the marae. Um, they just, you know, I think there needs to be some kind of education program that focuses on our our fire and our queer and our aunties and those ones that um, do have a voice in our communities. 
because it is, you know, I'm learning firsthand how devastating and destructive misgendering can be. Mm. Mm. So I think there's a few layers to that. There's one of the things we talk of in our whānau, um, in our whānau resource is about the grief yeah. that, that parents, grandparents can have because they had expectations, they had thoughts about someone. And when someone's filling a role that is really hard to fill, yeah. I know our kaikaranga here, our, um, our speakers travel from marae to marae to share the load. You know, yeah. we, would, we don't have everything we need on every marae. We don't. Yeah. And so, yeah. it's like, so, the, so there's the grief about losing someone, but there has to be on the other side of that the celebration and love and happiness of, of, of bringing the person into who they're meant to be. Yeah. And so, in that situation, the solution has to kind of come with a way that's also cultural because there's the personal stuff. It's not cool. It's absolutely not cool to be misgendered, uh, to be, some people use the phrase, dead named. Uh, and all of those things are harmful for someone who, who's who's trying to grow into who they're meant to be and, and who they know themselves to be. So mm -hmm. in that case, even though they're elders, I would say you need to get other elders who understand yeah. the situation to sit down and tell them to stop it. Yeah. Seriously, there's there's a point where there's education and there yeah. are going to be people who are going to go, oh, I understand now, I'm going to change. And there will be people, like I've got relations, I've got cousins who transitioned years ago, and now I'm not calling them that name, I knew them as this when they grew up. And I'm like, just stop it. Oh. Just stop it. What is with your ego right now? What's, mm. the, what's up with that? There has to be someone who can talk to them at that level. It has to be another koro or kuya. So yeah. you need someone who's, who's senior, and you know what? One of my tips, my top takatāpui tips in my resource, just says to Fano, you don't need to get it. You just need to be there. And so there's a the thing that someone just says to him, maybe you don't understand it. You don't, um, you're sad that you've lost your kaikaranga. Suck it up. Suck mm -hmm. it up, people. Um, this is what life is now. And respect your and and I get I get this attitude from my father, um, that just says, you know what, this is who, and, and I mean that person, at some stage is going to say it. Next time someone dead names, you have to stand up in front of the whole farm and go, ah, my name is such and such. Sit back down. Um, hmm. But that's a tough, really crazy thing to do. Um, hmm. But it has to be on the same level. We are it's got to be Kui and Koroa that go and speak to them and say, just stop it. Just stop it. We're running out of time. Uh, to <laughs> uh, there's one question to go and we have three minutes. Can you recommend safe places where young LGBTQ plus young people and their whānau can access for support? Uh, I would send you to the websites of... <laughs> Uh, Rainbow Youth and uh, of Inside Out and that have databases of where youth groups are around the country. We know that particularly in rural areas, they are usually not there. Uh, so they are based mainly in, in, um, in, in urban places. Many schools have peer support, place, have peer support groups and predominantly youth groups uh, for older young people. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, it's tapping in online. If it's that you need someone specifically to talk to, then outline uh, is, is absolutely amazing. And yeah, I think I still get people ringing me directly to talk to their nanas, uh, <laughs> to talk to their parents. And that's, oh, what are you showing us? It's not showing up. Uh, it's that it's the gift for you. For, um, oh. I don't think it's going to show up. Um, these are posters that Huriana has developed. Oh, Huriana is just crazy. Love is sacred. There's three of them. Um, so I will be sending those to you. Um, he mihi aroha tēnei ki a koe e te rangatira. Uh, ki au mau te wihi, uh, uh, ki au pai tō... Ka pirangi au ki te kite a koe kei roto i ngā e te tahi tūru i te pāre mata. Kia ora, Pāri Bogreen. Yeah, we... <laughs> um,
I'm encouraging that. I'm picking our whanau up and taking them and encouraging them to party vote green, definitely. Kilda, because I want to go into that into Parliament and be able to advocate for us in that space. That is my, that's everything I want to do for all of us. All of us. Kilda, everybody. So I appreciate you. Mate wa kakite akwe anu. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. <laughs> <laughs> Taking your title and stealing your title. Okay. Kia pai tōra. Kia pai o koutou rā. Kia pai tōra.